Geometry, section 10.6, circles and arcs. Uh, we have, for starters, the formula for the circumference of a circle. You've probably seen this before. It is uh, 2 pi r. Now, I do know that that could also be expressed as pi times diameter. Uh, I have a reason for the way that I express it as 2 pi r. Number one, I don't want to have two different formulas that stand in for the same thing. And two, a lot of times, um, you know, th things are given to us in terms of the radius and uh, it, it's 2 pi r is just more convenient. Um, as we move into chapter 11 and we do things with circles, 2 pi r is just going to be more convenient. You may not know that now, but I know what, what uh, happens in chapter 11. So if you think of it as terms of pi times diameter, that's perfectly fine. I'm always going to present it to you as I have here in black as 2 pi r. Okay. And uh, that's a circumference for me. Now, before we go any further, uh, I will say that if I were to cover all of the um, vocabulary that is in this section, this video would be 45 minutes long. And uh, I'm not going to make a 45 minute long video. I'm trying to keep it short. But what I do think you should do, and maybe you should pause the video right now and do this, is go ahead and read through the section and noting the bolded, highlighted terms because there is a lot of vocabulary in this section, okay? So again, I, I'm gonna cover a couple of things, but uh, if I covered all of them, this would be an extremely long video. So make sure that you know the things that are, you know, obviously the way it's a circle is defined and what a diameter is and what a radius is and what the center of a circle is. And uh, we're gonna get to major, minor arcs and semicircles and, uh, and some formulas as well. So all of that, uh, can be covered. central angle. That's another word that you should know that I don't know that I'll really get into in this video. Um, I did on my website put two things in, uh, two, two documents that are, are available for download. One of them is called 10.6 Notes Outline. The other one is the key to that. And this is what I would normally use, right? So this would be a handout that I've given uh, classes in a previous year, and uh, they work actually in groups of two or three and fill this out, and then we get back to the examples themselves. Okay, so you might wanna do that. It's available for download there. You could print it and do it, that's up to you. I don't know that a lot of you are gonna do that, but it's available for you, all right? Now, back to what we were talking about there. Uh, circumference is a, a formula that you have. And uh, I will also note that the way you name a circle, and actually, let me just make an adjustment to my little diagram here. Let's say that the circle center there is O. The way you name that circle, is simply by saying the circle symbol, which looks like this, and then the letter that is the center of the circle, right? If that was the, the letter W, then this would be circle W. And I remember being in geometry and thinking, you know, why, why is it that way? You know, how could it be that nonspecific? And the answer is that it just is. It just is that nonspecific, and it leaves the door open to have multiple circle O's. And I believe we talked about this earlier in the year. Those are called concentric circles. Different circles of different sizes that have the same center. Yes, they would have the same name, um, but uh, they, those are called concentric circles. That's not really a, a, a concept for this section, but uh, I, I wanted to make sure in case somebody was wondering that I covered that. All right. So right away, uh, we'll get into an example that discusses minor arcs, major arcs, semicircles, etc. Actually, I had that here to go over first. And minor arc basically just means less than 180 degrees, okay? And specifically what you want to do is name it with two letters. Minor arcs are always with two letters. So, for example, TU, this arc right here, that's a minor arc. And the way you would name it is to just say TU, and there is a symbol for that, and it looks like this, just a little... Uh, symbol over the top. This gets back to what we talked about very, very early in the year, chapter one, when we had segments and we could talk about the length of a segment, but actually here I'm not talking about any length. I'm just talking about a name. So the name of that arc is just defined by its endpoints, TU. By the way, if you said UT with that same symbol, that would be the same thing. Okay. Um, another minor arc. I don't know how well this is going to work with the highlighting, but uh, you know XW is clearly a uh, is clearly a minor arc. It clearly less than 180 degrees. UV would be less than 180 degrees. Always two letters. Okay, major arcs are always going to be with three letters. 
Major arcs would be something that's more than 180 degrees. Maybe something like TXU. Okay, and notice I said TXU, and I started at T and I went in the direction of X and passed it and ended at U. So by using three letters, you are identifying not just the endpoints, but also a direction. We've already identified TU as being a minor arc. TXU is a major arc because it's more than 180 degrees. So that can be written again with exactly three letters, TXU. Now here's a fundamental question. TWU, arc TWU, is that the same arc or is that a different arc? TXU is the one we've already talked about. I'm asking is TWU, is that the same or different? If you answered the same, that would be correct. TWU is the same set of points. It starts at T, it goes in the same direction as the, the first one we discussed, and it ends at U. So if I said TWU, that would actually be the same thing. Okay, now again, um, is this the only thing? Uh, this is less than perfect, I realize. Um, no, there would be other major arcs that you could list as well. How about um, VWU? VWU would go in the other direction. That would be another example of a major arc. And again, you must use three letters. V, W, and then ending at U, which would be the same thing as VXU, which would be the same thing as VTU. Okay? And then that leaves us with semicircles. Let me pick a different highlighter color here. Semicircles, uh, you may already know that term, it's just a half circle, right? But uh, order still matters and three letters are still gonna be required because if I, did, if I wanted this semicircle, T-U-V is what I would call that. Or again, you could call it V-U-T. T-U-V with the arc symbol would be that that you see there in orange. V-U-T would be the same thing. If I said T-X-V, that is also a semicircle, but that's not the same one. That's something different. T, X, V goes in the other direction. So again, we need three letters, and uh, the, the order of the three letters, of course, matters. Now, one other thing. Somebody might say, well, what about U, X, W? What about the one that starts at U, goes in this direction, X, or W? Or for that matter, U, V, W. Aren't those semicircles as well? Well, the answer is you don't know that. Uh, you wouldn't know that there's some line that passes through O that is the diameter of that circle. If I drew that line, or let's just say let's, I drew the radius that goes from O to U and I drew the radius that goes from O to W, uh, you wouldn't know if that's 179 degrees versus 180, okay? Now we're not trying to trick you here. This is not trying to be some kind of uh, uh, smarty pants lesson. The point is, is that the segment TV is a diameter because it passes through the center. And U to W, that segment, you don't know that it passes through the center. It's not drawn. So don't make any assumption there. I would not list UVW as a semicircle. Okay, now with that in mind, let's answer these questions real quick. Identify the minor arcs, major arcs, and semicircles in circle P. Again, there's the, the circle um, notation with endpoint A. Okay, so just real quick. And I'll, show, I'll just roll to their answers, but uh, minor arcs that have endpoint A, well, that would be arc AD and arc AE. And of course, you could flip the letters. Arc DA and arc EA would be the same things. But there are two minor arcs with A as an endpoint. What about major arcs? Well, I'm just looking at the first one again. Major arcs would be something like arc AED and arc A. D, E, three letters and more than 180 degrees. In both cases, you could have included B as well. So A, B, E would be no doubt to be this one. If you can follow where I'm tracing, uh, A, B, D would go this way. So A, E, D, A, B, D, for example, are the same major arc. Semicircle, uh, you could say A, D, B, you could say A, E, B. Those are different semicircles. Got to use three letters. So minor arc, two letters, semicircle, and major arc, three letters. That's the idea. Okay, now another emphasis that you would get if you uh, read the section or if you did my note sheet is that the measure of an arc is different from the length of an arc. Length, we're going to have a calculation. That's going to be our last example. 
Uh, the length of an arc is not the same thing as the measure. The measure is simply the degree measure, okay? That's one of those kind of, you know, it seems easy, but just make sure you understand that before you get into the homework, because you can, that is one thing that can confuse students. And that measure is the same as the measure of the central angle. So when I say that this arc here is 40 degrees, we would also know that this angle is 40 degrees. When I say that this angle is 56 degrees, we would know that this arc is 56 degrees. So when they then ask for the measure, that's what this means, the little, the little m means measure, the measure of arc xy, that is just the sum of 56 and 40. That would be 96 degrees. That's not a length. It's not in centimeters or miles or inches. It's just in degrees. The measure of arc DXM, D in the direction of X ending at M, that's a major arc going from D to X all the way to M, is going to be 56 plus another 180, right? This is a semicircle as defined by this diameter. 180 plus 56 would be 236 degrees. Okay. A circular swimming pool with a 16 foot diameter will be enclosed in a circular fence four feet from the pool. Now I could easily skip this example, but I don't want to because in my childhood, I actually owned this pool. That's not a joke. We had an above ground, uh, four foot deep pool and it was 16 feet across. And my dad built a deck all the way around it. It may not have been a four foot deck. It may have been something more like three feet, but he built a deck ring all the way around it like this. So for uh, nostalgic purposes, I need to include this example. Anyway, uh, it says that the diameter of the pool is 16, right? That would mean that the radius is eight. Each of these would be an eight. And then the fence is four. So that length right there is four. There'd be a length here also that would be four. Wouldn't that make the diameter of the large pool then 24? The diameter of the large circle, I mean. So all of this, four, eight, eight, and four would be 24. Well, they asked for what the what length of fencing material is needed. Now, back in the notes, I gave one formula that was the circumference formula for a circle, okay? And again, you could use the alternate pi times diameter. I wouldn't be mad at you if you did. In fact, it fits pretty well here. I'm just not going to use that. The diameter would be 24. The radius also, and that's the one I'm going to use actually, would be 12. And we're trying to find the the distance around for circumference in order for the fencing that would be needed for this pool. Well, that's going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is 12. Sometimes they will ask for in terms of pi. That would just be 24 pi. As in you do the math around the pi and then you just leave the pi. Okay. And 24 pi would be a perfectly fine answer. If they had said, uh, you know, in terms of pi or leave your answer exact, but uh, they didn't say that. In fact, they said round to the next round your answer to the next whole number. Now, why do you suppose they would ask for that? The next whole number. If you understand the question, you know why. Because uh, the answer here actually is six. Uh, excuse me, it's seventy-five point four, roughly seventy-five point four feet. And if I rounded down, if I just rounded to the nearest, like we're accustomed to doing on this problem, I'd come up with 0.4 feet too little of fencing. If I went to the store and I bought 75 feet of fencing, I'd just be have a little gap, 0.4 feet, uh, that didn't get covered. So they said round your answer to the next whole number. So go ahead and go ahead and get 76 feet of fencing, and you'll have enough to cover that circle. Uh, one more quick thing. When you're doing this calculation, when you're doing a calculation like this right here, please use the pi button on your calculator. I'll show you their work here. They substitute in for pi 3.14, and you may have learned that once upon a time. That is a rounded value, and the pi button on your calculator is more accurate. So please use the pi button that is on all of your calculators, and you'll have a more accurate answer there. All right, now, one more thing. Arc length, this should be easy, is just the circumference formula multiplied by a fraction, right? If I wanted to know the length of an arc on a circle, here's just a, a circle that I was using in an earlier example, and I knew the circumference, the distance around, well, if I only wanted to know part of that, just, just an arc length, arc length is just a por an arc is just a portion of a circle, well, it's just that fraction out of the circumference formula. Well, that's what this is saying. The length of arc AB 
is the measure of arc AB out of 360 times 2 pi r, right? If that measure is only half the circle, well, that'd be 180 degrees out of 360. If it's only a quarter of the circle, it'd just be 90 out of 360. By the way, 90 out of 360 is one fourth. You're welcome to reduce that fraction. So 2 pi r is the formula we've already used. This is just a fraction of that. So here you have a problem that says find the length of arc ADB. ADB is the major arc that you see there in red. That would be 210 degrees. The red arc is 210 degrees. How do I know that? Well, this is 150, this angle. That means that this arc would also be 150 degrees. That's a measure, not a length. It's a measure. And uh, we're trying to find the, the length, though, of the red one there. And if I go all the way around, it's 360. If I take out this 150, I'd be left with this 210. The calculation then for the length of the arc would be, and let's, let's write it out correctly, length of arc ADB would be 210 out of 360 pi, excuse me, 2 pi, two pi times the radius, which they gave us to be 18 centimeters, okay? Now, notice that they did say in terms of pi, so this would be another example where you'd want to uh, give your answer exact, and don't, don't use the pi button in this case is what we're saying, but rather um, just do the math that's around pi. And uh, this is 21 out of 36, which would actually be, um, what would that be? Seven out of 12, seven twelfths of 36. You could simplify that, comes out to 21. You have to incorporate the two as well. So 21 pi. Again, basically what I did there, and I used my calculator, I'm not gonna lie. I used my calculator and I did 21 or 210 over 360 times two times 18 and it's 21. If it comes out to a fraction, that's fine too. Okay, so the answer here would be in centimeters, 21 pi centimeters. You know, sometimes you'll get an answer that's, uh, you know, five thirds pi inches or something like that. That's perfectly fine. That's in terms of pi as well. If they had said round to the nearest, then you'd use the pi button on your calculator. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Good luck on your homework.